Today we're playing around with gobos. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. I'm here with Ashley Bramer. You can find her on Twitter at Mercedes Brims. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Today we're playing around with gobos. Now it might sound like a really weird word, but basically what a gobo is anything that goes between, that's where the word gobo comes from, goes between your light source and your subject. Now in a lot of cases they're going to be used in the studio. In some cases this is probably just going to be outside. If you have a shadow that's cast on the ground by a tree, that's technically a gobo. If you place your subject between the tree and the shadow and the shadow is hitting your subject in some way, the tree in that case is acting as a gobo. Um, that's a totally useful tip. If you guys are shooting outside, you've already probably used gobos. Now you can use them inside the studio as well. And that's why we've got things like this tree and the screen. Basically all you need some, with something is you know, a non completely solid uh, object. So this tree is going to have some light that's kind of like streaming through these leaves and some light that's being blocked by these leaves. And the end goal is basically to create a shadow pattern onto our subject that's going to be a little bit interesting. It's just gonna make it a little bit different from your standard portrait that just, you know, is totally blank and looks like it was lit in a studio. We're just gonna have a little bit of like light and shadow differences here. Now, there are a lot of different things you can use. Basically anything. We're gonna try, play around with, we've got a tree over here, we've got like a little screen. We can use like a, a ladder, a person, sticks, really whatever you want, as long as it's going between your light source and your subject. Now the other thing to keep in mind is how hard your shadows are going to be. And those are determined by two different factors. The first is how far away your light is from your gobo. In this case, we're gonna use the plant. The second is how far away your subject is from the plant. Now, if you want a hard shadow on your subject, what you want to do is make sure your light source is very far away. Think about a bright sun. It's going to create a very hard shadow on a sunny day. If the sun were a lot closer or on a shady day, you get a much softer shadow. So we're going to have our light source farther away. In this case, it's about 20 feet away. The other thing that changes is how close your subject is to your gobo. So as we get closer to our gobo, which is just a plant, the shadows on your subject's face are gonna get a little bit harder, and as we get farther away, they're gonna get a little bit softer. So those two things will make sure you can either keep your shadows harder with keeping your light source far away and your subject close to the gobo, or if you want it softer, get your light source a little bit closer and move your subject farther away from your gobo. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you are using a gobo is going to create shadows on your subject. So if you can use a modeling light, let's say we could lower all the house lights in here and then use a modeling light, we would be able to see the actual shadow that's being cast on our subject, which helps out a lot. The only things you have to keep in mind are there's a possibility, you know, one of these branches is going to cast a shadow directly on your subject's face, maybe cover, covering their eyes. So you might not want that. So just keep in mind, like this is a style of shooting. It just kind of like adds a little bit in the mix, maybe overshoot a little bit, tell your subject to kind of like step back, step forward, move around left to the right. And that's just going to vary it up to make sure that you'll find that place where it's an interesting sh shadow on your subject but you're not casting a whole lot of light maybe directly over their eyes. So that's it for the theory. We're gonna go ahead and start shooting. We're gonna use a couple different gobos and see the results from each of them. Thanks for coming along with us on our Gobalicious journey. I hope you had a great time learning about how to use gobos here in the studio. And if you want to use them outdoors, the sun is a pretty good way to do that. Sun, tree, shadow equals gobo. Now go out there and do it yourself. I can't wait to see your results. Post them in a comment down below. Thanks so much for watching Florin, guys. I'll Florin you later. Bye.